told you earlier about yet another violent clash between Chad members and the police earlier today in Abuja. At least one civilian was hit by a stray bullet during that clash. A youth corps member with Channel's television uh, is in critical condition after he was shot. And police also are mourning the death of an officer from today's clash. The deputy commissioner of the force in charge of operations at the Federal Capital Territory Police Command reportedly died of gunshots. Now, the police public relations officer, Frank Kumba, is joining us from police headquarters in Abuja. Force PRO, thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. It really must have been a difficult day, especially with reports suggesting that police officers were shot. What is the situation as we speak now? Thank you for having me. Indeed, it has been a very difficult day a very horrible one for that matter. Um, the, the, the protesters, numbering well over 3,000, came out at about 12.30 p.m. today, and without any art of provocation, they indiscriminately and violently attacked innocent citizens, attacked policemen on legitimate national assignment and then embarked on a spree of destruction to pu both public and private property. But the, um, the most unfortunate part of their conducts today is their use of lethal weapons. As a matter of fact, one of our own the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations at the Federal Capital Territory, DCP Usman A.K. Omar, was shot. He was fatally injured, and then we evacuated him to hospital. But as I speak to you, DCP Usman A.K. Omar is no more. He died moments after being admitted to the hospital. Two other officers, uh, all of them assistant superintendents of police, sustained very serious injuries. They are all currently undergoing medical attention. Um, a staff of China's television was also injured in that, uh, during that protest. And um, that person is also currently undergoing uh, medical treatment in one of the hospitals here in Abuja. A total of 54 suspects, nine of them females, have so far been arrested. Um, these suspects are currently undergoing intensive interrogation in police facility, with clearly the aim of making sure that they are timelessly and diligently prosecuted in, in, in our courts of law. Our deepest condolences for your loss. We had reported series of protests last week and we're told that this protest were conducted on the close monitoring by the police, which ensure that they were peaceful. We can only wonder what went wrong today. But do you have, because it is also reported that there are casualties on the other side, do you have details of that? As I speak to you, I don't have those figures, if any, but I could, all I can confirm today is the fact that 54 of those protesters are currently in our custody. Okay, the Inspector General of Police met with the President earlier. What is the outcome of this meeting? I was not in the meeting. But what I can tell you and what I can tell Nigerians is the fact that the, 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 the Inspector General of Police, as part of his responsibilities, is required to brief the President um, from time to time on security situations in this country. And when incidents like this occur, uh, the Inspector General of Police is also expected to personally uh, brief the commander-in-chief and president of the country. Well, the police was to have commenced surveillance of the FCT. You told us earlier that about 54 suspected members of the uh, 
Islamic Movement of Nigeria have been arrested. Do you have any precise lead as to the members who plan today's uh, violent attacks? Well, those suspects are still being profiled. As far as I'm concerned, these are violent protesters. These are persons who recklessly broke the laws of the land. These are persons who conducted themselves in a manner clearly inconsistent with the laws of our land. And until they are properly, um, until after the interrogation, until after the investigation, I will not be able to apportion, assign responsibilities to these suspects who are currently in our custody. Well, this is happening perhaps for the umpteenth time. Help us understand why it is very difficult for the police to be able to preempt and to have arrested the situation before it turned violent. Well, I, I, I think you need to understand how policing works. Uh, as police officers, we're expected to be the closest law enforcement agency to our people. As police officers, we expected to police our citizens and our country with human face. We expected to do so in line with both international laws as well as our national laws. And we, we carry out our operations within the norms and within the confines of the law. And that is what distinguishes us. That is what sets us apart from other um, non-state actors. So for us, we will continue to act within the bounds of the law. Even when controlling these protesters, we also try to make sure that we obey and observe our standard operational procedures, our rules of engagement, and also employ what we call proportionality uh, in the use of force. We look forward to seeing this issue resolved permanently and amicably. Uh, Police Public Relations Officer Frank Mbath, thank you for talking to us on the news this evening.